Hello there, I'm Chris Bradford, the author of the Bodyguard series and the Young Samurai series, uh, as well as a number of um, books uh, for Barrington Stoke like Ninja and Bullet Catcher. I've been asked by Megan, the book addicted girl, uh, to talk a little bit about my books for uh, Diverse Disabilities Week um, because I feature quite a few characters with disabilities in my stories. She sent me a bunch of questions, so I'm going to tell you the questions and then I'm going to answer them for you. Now her first one is, is saying that in every series that I've uh, ever done, there's always a character with some form of disability, uh, but they're never less than able. And uh, Megan's asked me why I think that's so important to have, in her words, kick butt disabled characters uh, like mine in my books. Well, I think firstly, why not? Um, I think uh, people with disabilities are generally more amazing because of the challenges they have to overcome just to begin with. And then this adds quite a lot of interest and intrigue into the story. It gives good character interaction and allows for a few plot twists and other different things that I can do in a story that I wouldn't have if I just had uh, average characters. So that's one of the kind of key reasons. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the characters for my second question, um, so you can understand who I'm including in my books. I'm going to come on to the bodyguard at the very end, but uh, just to begin with, my Young Samurai series. Uh, I featured uh, a girl called Neko, uh, which means cat. Uh, it's like a little black cat. Uh, in the Ring of Fire. Now this girl, she's uh, deaf and dumb. Uh, but when I say that, that term that I've used is what was used in that century. So please don't uh, take any offence from that. But she was used like that character because people assumed she was dumb because of her inability to communicate. But of course she could communicate. And Jack Fletcher, my hero uh, of the series, sees this and understands this. In actual fact, Neko is key to his survival in the Ring of Fire. Now in my Bullet Catcher series, I have uh, a boy who's autistic, a guy called Joe, and, and I have another girl called Izumi uh, who is blind. But these aren't disabilities in the Bullet Catcher series. They're actually fact talents, superpowers. Um, and this is kind of my X-Men cross with um, Bodyguard series. So Joe, who is autistic, he has the ability of recall. Uh, and he can recall vast amounts of information and take kind of actual, actual snapshots of a scene. So he has instant recall. And there's a guy called Stephen Wiltshire who has this ability in real life. And he can look at a city scene and then draw it in exact detail, um, having just seen it for maybe a few minutes. Now that is amazing. And Azumi, who's blind, um, she has blind sight, um, the ability to see without actual vision. Now this again, there's a gen boy called uh, Ben Underwood who was very famous for being able to walk around like any person, shoot uh, a, a basketball into a hoop, skateboard, cycle, and he was completely blind. And he used echolocation to be able to see in his world. Now finally, of course, my uh, greatest uh, disabled heroine or hero uh, is Charlie in my bodyguard books. Um, she's in a wheelchair. So what? In actual fact, I don't make a very big thing of it in the series because I don't think it needs to. And when you meet Charlie to begin with, I don't even mention it. Uh, and Connor, my hero, doesn't even notice it until she moves away from the table because I don't think that's the important thing about her. I think the important thing about her is her ability as an operations leader and also the mystery of how she became to be in a wheelchair. <laughs> 